Hi, I'm Lily. And I'm Julia. We are two high school best friends and college roommates with an interesting dynamic. And we are here to culture each other on different aspects in pop culture. We talk about all things music, movies, musicals, Disney, and more. This is Pop Culturing My Best Friend. Welcome back, Welcome back to Pop Culturing My Best Friend. <laughs> yes. So this is episode five. Yes. I can't believe this is already episode five. We've been doing this for over a month now. Yeah. Crazy. Um, and so this episode is kind of like unbeknownst to us. Um, what we're talking about later kind of ties into being episode five. And I thought mm-hmm. that was really funny. And when you see what we're discussing later in this episode, you will get why it is funny. Yeah. All right. So let's get into nonsense news. Ding. Ding. <laughs> My first piece of nonsense news is that we uploaded a blooper from episode four today. Yes. And it's really, really funny. So go check that out. It is exclusive to the streaming platform. Mm-hmm. So it will not be on YouTube because yes. I'm lazy. <laughs> It's just easier to just upload it to streaming. Yeah. So, so that's the first piece of news. The mm-hmm. second piece of news is I had an interview for the education program yesterday, mm-hmm. and it was okay. Oh, no. Don't just say that. It was great. Um, I got to listen to them the whole thing, and she did a really good job, um, especially for it being a Zoom interview. Oh, it was exciting, and... I don't think they can count you off on anything. I think that was a really good interview. Or can they? <laughs> no, it was great. It was she was funny. Um, I don't know. You seemed like a nice person, and I think they will like you. So yeah, I don't 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 put down your interview. It was good. Um, so my stories uh, are first of all, this is our finals week. Yay! <laughs> Um, I have classes end for this quarter, and we start some new classes next week. So um, podcast stuff's going to be a little funky for a second. We got to figure out like when we're going to have time um, mm-hmm. with our new schedule. Um, so yeah, wish us luck with that. Um, we finally got to go to Build a Bear and get the the spring green frog stuff. And his name is Jojo, and I love him. He is a handsome little man, and I have pictures of him uh, up on my Instagram. Um, and then finally, today's really exciting. We get to go on a farm tour and pet some baby goats. Oh my gosh. Ah, I love goats and I'm really excited about it. Uh, I don't know what else we're going to get to do, but it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. Yay. Indeed. Uh, is that all we got? Yes. Okay, cool. That was nonsense news. Ding. Ding. (laughs) Okay, let us now get into your thing. Walt Lily World. Yes. Ding. Ding. Um, so, first of all, Epcot's Flower and Garden Festival has officially begun, and the food looks really interesting. Um, I've been looking into some of the menus and, like, what they've got and what's good and what's not, but to me, they've got, um, a chocolate macaron on a stick, and it looks so yummy. It's, like, it looks like a lollipop, but it's a macaron, and I love macarons, so sign me up. Mm -hmm. Um, they're also bringing back Frushi which we were supposed to get when we went in May last year, but things got very postponed and the Flower and Garden Festival was no longer there when we were able to go. Um, so Frushi is fruit sushi, like a dessert sushi, and it sounds so strange yet interesting, and I really want to try it. Um, and then finally, they have a strawberry mousse that looks like a Lego brick, and it comes with gummy worms, and there could not be anything more perfect on this earth, and I really want to that interesting <laughs> it uh, we'll have to post a picture of it on instagram it really does look like a lego brick i just showed julia and she was like oh yes it does um so going away from flower and garden festival um the tron coaster that's coming soon um the canopy for it is almost there's complete. a tron coaster a tron coaster i didn't realize people were still into tron Same. like it does not make any sense to me i know my dad and harrison like tron i could not get into Tron. Yeah. Um, I've never seen it, but Marty wants me to watch it really I now. remember, I remember when, like, the newer Tron came out, and it was, like, a big thing, but then that faded out pretty quickly, didn't yeah. it? So, I didn't know Tron was still Same. Popular. Same with Avatar. When they made the whole Avatar, like, Pandora area, I was like, why? Well, because the sequels are coming out but soon. they haven't but yet. <laughs> no, they haven't. So and also, gonna go. And also, Avatar with blue people is... It's not I'm a not good a movie. Fan of it's Avatar not at all. good. 
Um, Pandora is cool to look at, but I just I can't don't know. get into I remember Avatar. when the Blue People movie came out. <laughs> well, I don't want to confuse it with the good Avatar. <laughs> so the Blue People movie came out. I remember I watched it a lot. Because mm-hmm. when we would go to our grandparents' house in Florida, that was, like, one of the six DVDs that they had oh, that okay. we could watch. <laughs> I remember watching it a lot, but mm-hmm. it still didn't make it good. Right. Um, so, yeah, there's a Tron coaster coming. It's supposed to be really fast. Um, you're, like, on one of their, like, light cycle things. Yeah. And it's, it's really interesting. Not for me. I probably will not be getting on it. Maybe once, but I highly doubt it. it it's like, looking are, scary. Like, are you driving it? It's like driving the roller coaster? <laughs> Well, no. I don't understand the concept. Oh, okay. It's one of those, like, um, you haven't seen the Hagrid ride either, but it's it's a similar kind no. of vehicle to that where you're, like, on a motorcycle, but you're, like, strapped in, like, a roller coaster. Oh. It's, like, one person behind each other. Everyone's okay. on a motorcycle. No, I thought it was going to be, like, what I imagined was, like, you're, like, in it and you're kind of, like, like you know, pushing the pedals and, like, ah. go, But it's on a track. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, That's it's what I imagine. Like, it's going to be, like, a really fast, like, thrill ride. Like, one of the biggest I feel ones like that they're going to have. I like my idea better. I think your idea is funny, and I'd like <laughs> to see that um, somewhere. Um, the next story is that um, this day, March 4th, last year, um, Minnie and Mickey's Runaway Railway opened. Um, I was desperately searching for stories for today because there's not a lot of news that's come out of the parks, but um, I found I found this and I was like, oh my gosh, why isn't anyone talking about this? I haven't seen anything about it. I don't um, know what that is. Runaway Railway is the new ride that replaced the Great Movie Ride, which was a um, a Hollywood Studios staple, and it was really sad to see it go. Uh, the Great Movie Ride was Marty's favorite ride um, when he went. And you were the you went through the history of all the movies, and mm. there were really impressive animatronics in there. It was so cool. And the standout part of it was the Wizard of Oz scene. So you'd go through, you'd see Munch, Munchkin Land, and this really, really, really great animatronic of the Wicked Witch would come out, and like she'd like, "I'll get you, my pretty, to you." Um, it was such a cool concept, and they announced it was going away, and they took it away, and it was gone. And Runaway Railway is Minnie and Mickey's first ride out of all the parks since it's been open. What do you Ever. mean by that? They've never had their own attraction before. Minnie and Mickey. That's it's always, weird. Yeah, I know. It's weird to think about, but this is their first that one. That doesn't make sense. I know. <laughs> yep. Uh, Disney World has never had a Mickey Mouse ride, and this was his first one. Opened last year, on uh, the 49th year of Disney World being open. Insane to think about. Oh, I saw a thing... I think it was on TikTok. Mm -hmm. I was scrolling through and I saw uh, the outfits that, the new outfits for Mickey and Minnie. Yes, they're really pretty. Yeah, I meant to say something about it. Yeah, it's (laughs) like I forgot. Um, So, yeah, Runaway Railway is their first ride. And um, as much as I love the great movie ride and I miss it a lot, um, Runaway Railway is, I think, is a pretty decent predecessor to it. Um, And I I enjoyed it a lot when we got to see it. it, the videos of it don't do it justice if you've only watched videos. Um, in person, it's a lot better. And I think the standout part of that ride is the Daisy animatronic. She's really cool. Um, yeah. So I enjoyed Runaway Railway. Um, and then my last story is kind of a, a, a PSA to everyone. Um, do not do this. There have been several police reports filed because guests have assaulted cast members who asked them to put masks on. Um, and also, a Orange County police officer got assaulted by someone after they were asked to put a mask on. So, uh, don't do that. Don't hurt people. Just just kindly put your mask on and step just away. wear a mask. And oh if, my you gosh. Don't, if you don't want to wear it, go find a corner where there's no one around you. <laughs> do not do it in public around other people. Um, so, yeah, please don't assault humans. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, and those are all the stories we like, got. It's like we're just trying to keep people safe, you know. Yeah. You don't. <laughs> it's first, funny. don't wear masks. Now you're trying to assault people. Like what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's it for Walt Lily World. Ding, ding. All right, we're on to repeat of the week now. Would you like to go first and share yours? Uh, sure. All right. So mine. Okay. All week I've had songs stuck in my head. 
but they've all been songs from the movie we're going to talk about. <laughs> and I'm going to talk about every single song in that movie. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't do that. So I just picked a random song that I liked. So the song I chose was Like You Do by Joji from his Nectar album. Oh, yes. interesting. <laughs> I don't know why, but like this morning the song popped into my head for some reason. Um, it's been a it's been at least a week since I've listened to it though. But uh, basically this song, if I remember correctly from my research, um, <laughs> this song is about uh, him and this girl are in this relationship and they, it's like perfect except their dreams in life are leading them down separate paths oh, and so weird. they're doing the right thing by breaking up even though he doesn't want mm -hmm. to so i also thought this was interesting because it kind of yeah. has to do with the movie say, it ties in with the theme of the episode yeah um but kathy and jamie in the movie we find out do not yeah uh, really... make a smart decision yeah. and be like we're going down two separate paths. We should probably go our separate ways now. No. Um, but in this song, he's talking about how their lives are leading them down separate paths. And they should just end it now, even though he doesn't want to. He's still, mm -hmm. like, madly in love with this girl. But, like, that's where it's leading them. So they might as well do it now. Um, so it's a very mature look at this kind of situation. Mm -hmm. um, so some of my favorite lyrics... Um, from the pre-chorus, if you ever go, all the songs that we like will sound like bittersweet lullabies. Mm -hmm. And I love that lyric because I relate to it hard. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Um, since I met you, all the gloomy days just seem to shine a little more brightly. And, um, the final lyric is from the chorus. And everyone else, they don't matter now. You're the one I can't lose. No one loves me like you do. Oh, yeah, good. Okay, more people need to listen to Joji. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically, um, his uh, Nectar album, which mm -hmm. is the album he came out with last year, is so good. I remember you telling me, like, I remember her getting into Joji's music, like, while we've been here this, like, past semester. And, like, she's like, I don't like any of his songs except for one. Yeah. And then she got really I love, into him. Oh my gosh. It's so good. Well, it's because that was the only song I had really listened to besides, mm -hmm. like, his pink guy music stuff. And oh, I'm, and that is I'm not... not, I'm not into that. I'm yeah. into, like, actual music. Um, but, like, then Shane kept recommending me different songs from his I think it's Ballads number one in his Nectar album. Mm -hmm. And just like, I'm obsessed. I, I love it so much. <laughs> Her, she, just, she ordered a Joji shirt and it just came here in the mail the other day. Yes. Um, I love it. It's giant. It goes down to my it's knees. It's so cute. It looks, it looks really cute. <laughs> I love it. So, yeah, that's all I got. All right. So, my repeat of the week is interesting. I've been going down a Vocaloid rabbit hole this week. Um, and I've been adding a whole bunch of new songs to my local aid playlist that I haven't been listening to in a really, really long time. So my song today is Torinoko City, which means Left Behind City. Um, it was produced by 40 Meter P, and he used Hatsune Miku as his voice bank. Um, um, it has two titles. Um, so Torinoko City is the, is the I guess, the Japanese title. But um, its official English title is urban abandonment urban abandonment instead of urban uh abandonment it's, it's interesting um and I, I i didn't know that before until i found it when i was doing research today um so this song is really interesting it's about a girl who was left behind um and abandoned by all of her friends um she she can't see out of the walls of the city that she's built up around herself and she feels like she's lost herself and she doesn't know why she's alive anymore because she has no one left in her life uh, but by the end of the song, um, she finds uh, um, in the original, um, not the Project Diva version, um, in the original illustrated one, she finds like a silhouette of a person um, and she finds new love to focus on and she's saved from the city that she's built up. And it's really interesting. And she goes through a lot of like really deep emotions throughout the song. Um, so I have three lyrics to go through. So... Um, one of them is, I like you, I hate you, I like you, I hate you, was repeated over and over. This tiresome love, I don't want it. And, like, ooh, that's, it's really, like, she, she goes through a lot of stuff. Now, well, the song is obviously in Japanese, so this is the translation. And 
Um, some of the translations are slightly different, but this is the one that I like the most. Um, so I, I like you really feel bad for this girl because she loves her friends, but they've completely like left her on her own. So she's dealing with a lot of uh, issues. Like she doesn't know if she should care about them anymore. Um, the next one I have is the feeling of entrapment that hinders my breathing. And like, I felt that before. Like, have you ever felt like you were in like such like a, like a hole, like you can't even like breathe and you're just like stuck. Like right now. Like right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and then um, she, she does this a couple times. Um, why am I living? Tell me within a 100 word limit. And she also asks a couple times, like, what is my name? Tell me within a 10 word limit. Um, like, she doesn't even know who she is anymore. She has no idea why she's alive. She doesn't know who she is and what she's doing. Tell me within a 100 word limit. And I think that's really interesting. Um, I, I, I always really like that lyric. Um, so that's all I have. Um, I'm glad this poor girl finds someone in the end to, to give all of her love to. Um, yeah. Good song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it for repeat of the week, I guess yeah ding um ding. so now we're gonna take a break usually we would go straight into waving through a musical window but because our movie of the week is a musical mm -hmm. we're combining the segments yes. into a giant movie musical segment <laughs> um so we're gonna take a break and come back with that <laughs> Welcome back to Waving Through a Musical Window Plus Movie Review. Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> so this week, um, we decided to watch a movie, um, a movie adaptation of one of my favorite musicals mm -hmm. of all time, <gasps> The Last Five Years. The Last Five Years is so underrated and I hate <laughs> it. And it's never been on Broadway. It's only oh. ever been off Broadway. Interesting. This yeah. is the first time I'd ever seen it. And it was so good. It's so <gasps> Good. Oh my god, it was awesome. I love it so much. Now, I've never seen the stage show, so, I, so I, I don't really have a lot of comments about that, but I do know some things about it that are different than the movie, yes. which are really interesting. Yes. But this show has such an interesting, like, cool concept. Uh-huh. There's awesome. a bunch of, there's a bunch of different productions done of this show. Um, Like I said, the highest, like, thing they've gone up to is off broadway mm -hmm. which like sucks honestly if i want to be in the broadway production of the last five years <laughs> um i love this show so much um yeah so i have a synopsis it's not from playbill because they did not have a synopsis for Sad. some reason so this is just a random synopsis i found on the internet that i thought was really good <laughs> awesome all right all right Jason Robert Brown's drama desk winner, The Last Five Years, has been translated into a handful of languages and was named one of Times Magazine's 10 best shows of 2001. Hmm. 2001? Oh, yeah. wow. Interesting. Yeah, because the her. bootleg on the on YouTube with Sherry Renee Scott in it is from oh, 2002. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah. A testament to the show's longevity... Is that the word? Longevity? Longevity, yeah. yeah. I can't speak. And spurred by the show's regional popularity, the last five years enjoyed an off-Broadway revival, a second stage, at, at second stage in 2013. Mm -hmm. A film adaptation was released in 2014, starring Anna Kendrick and Jeremy Jordan. An emotionally powerful and intimate musical about two New Yorkers in their 20s who fall in and out of love over the course of five years. The show's unconventional structure consists of Kathy, the woman telling her story backwards, mm -hmm. while Jamie, the man, tells his story chronologically. Mm -hmm. The two characters only meet once at their wedding in the middle of the show. It was really cool. This concept is so interesting. So like the synopsis said, Kathy is singing all of her songs about their relationship backwards yes, from, from the time. From their breakup, or I guess their From divorce. their separation yeah. to the day after their first hookup yeah <laughs> is the last song she sings and um jamie sings from their first like hookup date mm -hmm. to when he writes her the letter that he's leaving yeah 
it's so obviously right, right off the bat you know what's going to happen I mean it's really sad yeah. seeing her relationship progress backwards because she's so happy at the beginning oh my and gosh. his progress forward yes and see him get sadder and sadder yes. and angrier and bitter and it's, it's like wow it's a lot and oh, yeah. it's a mature themed show yeah um and it really makes you think there was um if you want so there's this big argument about like team Kathy, team Jamie, like who's in the wrong, like whatever. (laughs) I am not on a specific team. Mm -hmm. Um, I love them both. They both have a lot of faults. And if a really good breakdown of this, Catherine Steele is a musical theater YouTuber. She's like one of my favorite YouTubers of all time. She's hilarious, but she has a full breakdown Mm -hmm. of every little aspect of their relationship. And it's like tied basically. Yeah, I, in my opinion, I think Jamie did a couple more things that I, I would be less oh, okay with. yeah. Oh, um, and we'll get into that later. Absolutely. So I personally am on Team Kathy because he did some things that are like, that there you can't yeah. get worse than that in a relationship, really. I, and I agree. Like, I agree. Um, but again, as in... They both have their faults. They all have yeah. their faults. Um, yeah. Speaking of both, um, in the stage show, there are only two characters. Yes, this is an only two. This is a two-person show. Yes. So oh, there, there are the only two characters that sing in the entire show. Mm-hmm. In the movie, there are like background characters and like, and in one scene, there are some ensemble like dancers for like one second. Yeah. Um, but they really aren't important. It just like kind of fills out the city, so they don't look like they're the only people yeah. walking around. Yeah. Because it's kind of. I like the way. I don't know how other people feel about the movie, but I really like the movie and mm-hmm. how they adapted this stage show into film because yeah. in my mind, that would be a hard show to adapt right, to film yeah. because it is only two people and the world that they're building in the show is so small. Uh-huh. And especially because it's New York and there's so many people in the city. Yeah. Um, so they had to represent that some- somehow. So uh, today yeah. we... Yeah, today we will mainly be talking about the movie because Lily hasn't seen any of the bootlegs or anything. Mm-hmm. I showed her a couple of clips of some things yeah. and told her some things about it, but we'll mostly be talking about the movie yeah. and sprinkle in some other things in there. <laughs> All right, so, so let's start from the beginning. Yes. So it opens with um, um, the apartment. The apartment. Um, it starts off as a nice piano ballad yes there's lots um, of piano in the show and yes it's really really nice uh let's see the song is called still hurting i mm-hmm. love this song it's on my play it's like the first song in my playlist on spotify <laughs> called songs i sing when i'm home alone i have a lot of songs from this musical in that playlist um, um so kathy starts singing first so they kind of go uh, it's kathy jamie kathy jamie together and then like yeah you know. you're seeing both sides of the story yes so, I love um, I love that. We start with Kathy and it the the camera goes in through her window and you see her reading a letter and she's crying yes. and she's so sad. Um she begins Jamie is over and Jamie is gone. Yeah. You're that's like it. holy wow, she got right left. Off the bat. Wow, okay. Here we are at his wedding his wedding his wedding ring is on the table next yep. to her. Um and his keys and yep. that's it. That's it. Um, um you go through a lot of like all the emotions in the song. Yeah, you go it's from a like roller coaster. really sad to like please come back to really angry to I'm just hurting. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. Um so I, I wrote about this. I love her cold delivery. Oh, the beginning. yes. She's just like, there's nothing. There's it's so cool. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I, I really like that. Um, one thing in the scene that I thought was awesome is mm-hmm. the camera pans through a bunch of photographs in their apartment of like their entire timeline. Like yeah. starting from like, uh, I, I can't remember where it started, but like. I don't even remember. But it goes through like a whole bunch of pictures like, and you can tell it's going back in time. And it's yeah. Like, oh. I love this song That's and I really love the cool. camera work they do with this entire song. Just mm-hmm. like the panning they do like around her yeah. and the very first part is really cool. Mm-hmm. Just, I think it kind of like you can do so much with camera work. Um, Alfred Hitchcock always said in his movies that the camera is a character. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so the camera is the character it in is this really, movie. Really cool. And it's like showing how alone 
she is in this moment. Something I'm going to be talking about a lot in this is the lighting. Yeah. In this movie. Because it's this so is the first great. time I've ever noticed it. But when you move through the timelines, the lighting changes on both sides of the spectrum. So yeah. we're first there. It's like dark. Yeah. It's like I said, it's so gray. It's dark. So um but when we get to the next song jamie's song at the beginning of the relationship is so bright and the lighting changes yeah oh my god at the very end um when um there's a song between the two of them when you look at her she's so bright and colorful and then the sun is shining right behind her and then you look at him and he's like like almost like darker colors and he just it's it's so so good i love filmmaking um So another important thing that happens during the song that you need to watch for is that Kathy, she takes off her wedding rings, but she also takes off a watch that was given to her. She takes off a wedding ring, a watch, and a bracelet. Oh, okay. A bracelet too. Yes. So yeah, you got to watch the watch because that will come in to play a little later. And I think that's only a movie thing. Really? Yeah, because in the stage production, they don't interact with each other until the middle song. Yeah. Okay. They're, like, on opposite sides of the stage, mm-hmm. basically, except for in this one song, which I'll get to in a minute. I do like how in the movie, though, like, time is represented in a lot of stuff, which mm-hmm. is the watch, again, represents time. But also there's a whole song about, like, time and, like, the time is passing in both of their, mm-hmm. their timelines. It's, it's, so, it's so cool. Yeah. It's, man. Mm-hmm. I love this show. <laughs> okay. Do you have anything else about that song? Mm-mm. All right. So we leave Kathy. She's sad. And we transition into this very bright, upbeat number. Yes. And, oh, it was so jarring. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Um, called uh, Shiks a Goddess. Mm-hmm. And Kathy and Jamie are hooking up. Yeah. Yeah, this, yeah, is, the fir- this is their, like, first date, hookup, whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, this song is very bright. Mm-hmm. Um, and this song is Jamie's song. And he's just singing about how he's being a rebel because he's dating a woman that his mother would disapprove of. Yeah. Um, I thought it was really interesting. Um, yeah. I don't know. The our, my, our first introduction to him is that, like, this guy is funny. He's charismatic. Like, mm-hmm. so he's pretty. Yeah. So, like... Um, oh, I love how Jeremy he Jordan. how changes throughout the movie is another, like, really interesting thing. Because yeah. he's so, like, I guess naive and, like, he's not mama's boy anymore yeah. in this well, scene. Well, because at the beginning of the movie, he's only 23. Yeah. Which um, we'll get to in a couple and, of songs. Uh, we'll talk about it um, a little bit later. But he starts off, like, with, like, messy hair. And he's, like, mm-hmm. um, wearing, like, casual clothes. And then later, um, he he looks totally different. So I will talk about that yeah. when he starts changing. Oh, yeah. It's really interesting. Um, this song is basically him telling her that it doesn't matter if, any, if she has any imperfections at all. Yeah. Because to him, she is perfect yeah like doesn't nothing matters she is perfect and there's so nothing sweet. wrong with her it's cute yeah so oh wow well. yeah it's like okay <laughs> they both have their timelines like in their early years you're like rooting for them it's like oh yeah you, know, you so root for nice. them so hard so but you know what's going yeah. to happen it's really sad it's so sad <laughs> Oh my gosh, do you have anything more about that song? I don't. I always forget about that song. It's not one of the songs I, that yeah. really sticks out in my mind, but I love Jeremy Jordan, and he's shirtless in most of the song, and it, <laughs> I love him. Okay, the next song is See, I'm Smiling, mm-hmm. so we... Ooh. I love this song so much. Same. Um, so we Ooh. transition from that to a little bit before the separation note came up yes uh they're on a bridge kathy they're in ohio Mm -hmm. they're on a bridge out on um a lake Mm -hmm. and um what we find out about kathy later is that because she's a struggling actress in new york and she's a writer and she can't get any jobs and so she but she wants to keep continuing to act because that's what she loves to do and so she goes to this community theater basically camp yeah in in ohio Ohio. she she goes there a couple times throughout the show because like she knows Mm -hmm. that's where she can get parts yeah she goes there every summer yeah there's a whole song about it Mm -hmm. um but this song um they're sitting on a bridge together in ohio 
and they're trying to work through their issues. Yeah, and uh, at first it's like, oh yeah, see, they're smiling, they're happy, yeah, things are going all right, and um, then they start arguing. Well, she's like, she like <laughs> is having this hope about they're gonna reconcile their differences over this weekend because she's in Ohio. Well, he's still working in New York. Yeah. like it's like this the entire summer. Yeah, and uh, she's just she's hopeful yeah and through he, this whole he's song in Ohio as well i'm sure you said that earlier and, but he's visiting her yeah and um, he's yeah and letting her go on and on about how great this weekend is gonna be yeah until he's going to smash her heart into pieces basically yeah um, um he's visiting her uh again and he and what he's basically about to tell her is that hey actually I'm going home this weekend after he lets her go on on this tangent. Like, oh, yeah. we're going to have fun. We're smiling. We're happy. Yeah. Things are going to be okay. It's like, well, I have a party to go to. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um. He let, like, they start walking down the mm-hmm. bridge to, like, go somewhere else. And he lets go of her hand. And I'm like, that's a bad sign. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she, she starts to break i mean yeah. she just can't stand aside anymore and her feelings need to be heard because yeah. as we see a lot through uh, this musical is that it's a really big theme that kathy wants to have her own life and wants to be successful in her life yeah. but she's putting her feelings aside so he can follow jamie career. can be successful um and I, I said earlier but i don't know if you caught it he is a writer um, and he's also, they both have arts careers and they're both trying really hard to yeah. succeed. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's, it's hard for Kathy because he, as we'll, we'll see later, he's successful. And so far she's not. Yeah. And she struggles with that And it's just hard. Lot. It's difficult. Yeah. And I get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, they yell at each other and they, they have their argument and then we go to our next scene. So the next song is a Jamie song mm-hmm. and it's moving too fast. We open with uh, Jamie's on his laptop somewhere <laughs> in New York and he gets a call that some his manuscript for his book is getting picked up by a publisher. Yes, very excited. Um, and he calls Kathy and he's like, let's move in together. I'm on this high. Let's like yeah. do this. Let's start life. Um, and this whole song is basically his success at a young age. Yeah. And he even says... I don't know the exact line, but mm-hmm. there's, like, a line in the song where he's, like, you know, I didn't expect this for at least ten more years. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really cool. Um, and the, this is the this is the song I was talking about where there's some ensemble. They walk around him really quickly um, and kind of circles. Um, mm-hmm. You can tell it's, like, a stage thing. It's not just, like, random extras. Yeah. Um, and they walk around him to make it look, like, busy and like frantic and he's like running to like tell her and like they'll move in and have a great time and then this ensemble starts dancing behind him and that's really cool um and this is the only time we really see an ensemble at least that i that stood out to me um which is interesting you'd think that they besides the well in summer in ohio they have those the guys yeah but but that's more of like she's she's doing like a like stage rehearsal yeah. and this is like random humans just walking through New York and they're just dancing yeah. and we don't see them ever again really and I thought that was funny. Mm-hmm. So success at a young age, he's like, this is moving really fast, but like psh, I don't care because yeah. I'm getting ahead in life. <laughs> Uh, so then the next song is a part of that. We go back to Kathy. Mm-hmm. They're at a party. Oh, yes. Um, how we get into the scene I thought was interesting. Um, so we the last time we see Jamie in Moving Too Fast is he is in his like publisher's office. Mm-hmm. And it goes from out the window yeah. into where um, There's she a is. lot of window transitions yes, in this movie. It was a movie. really cool transition. Um, I, I thought it was awesome. Yeah, they're at a party and she's talking about Jamie and how she's a part of his story. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, it's, it was so cute at the beginning of the I song. love this song. There's so many layers to this song. Mm-hmm. Um, 
she's singing his praises in this entire song but there's an underlying tone of the loneliness that's creeping up on her and how <laughs> she's not a part of her own story like she, she has no story she's just a side character in his yeah um she does this thing um they talk about how he's like so stoic in his writing process yeah. and he just stares out the window yeah. and she takes pictures of him and then he smiles. Yeah, she mentions his smile a lot as yeah. if that's, like, the only thing that's keeping her going. And it's really sweet when it's, like, this, what I wrote is in my notes is that this, the song is very bittersweet. Oh, um, yes. Because she's always, like, um, when at these social events that she goes to for him, he'll bring her in, introduce her, like, oh, this is my, this is my lady. But then he just goes off to talk to important people and she just kind of left sitting by herself at the yeah. bar or just on her own and mm-hmm. it's really sad because like this is what she wants as well but for different reasons for acting she wants to be like recognized by others and also she doesn't want to be alone yeah, yeah. it's sad mm-hmm. uh the next song is the shmuel song oh the shmuel i song. love the shmuel song this we stand so nice. shmuel <laughs> this is one of like the really nice like most pure moments in their relationship that oh we see oh my gosh yes she she's coming back from a, a bad audition or is she she talks about how she doesn't want to audition for something she is coming back i think she works at a bar or Ah, something and she had a bad day and yeah so she's frustrated and then um she talks about how like jamie's like oh don't you have an audition coming up she's like no i'm not going because she's like Mm -hmm. nothing's going right for me i can't act i can't even be uh like i can't even work at this bar like i can't do anything so she's like laying on the couch she's upset and jamie starts singing her this really silly like i guess christmas story kind of song. he's like he's like i wrote you a story you want to hear but (laughs) it's basically just a tale to teach kathy about perseverance and that her time will come Mm -hmm. uh i love this song a lot because like the entire show they're talking about like oh, he's such a great storyteller. But we don't see it except for in this song. Yeah. We see his storytelling skills. And I love this story. It's a great story. It was really, it was really <laughs> silly. Because um, uh, in his story, Shmuel, uh, it, she is Shmuel. She is Shmuel. And she's like, why am I Shmuel? Why can't I be the girl <laughs> from Odessa? Like, what? Um, and... Through, um, through the scene, he's, like, putting, like, Christmas, like, garlands around here. It's Christmas time, so, like, everything's, like, pretty and sparkly anyway. Mm-hmm. And it's just nice. It's, like, it's, like, a warm scene. It's nice yeah. to look at. And he's happy. Yeah. She's happy. Jeremy so, Jordan's Jeremy Jordan's performance in this is really good. Um, yeah. He really embodies the character that Jamie is being mm-hmm. in this moment. And I love that. Yeah. That's all I have on Shmuel. Same. I love I Shmuel. I just wrote, we stand Shmuel. We stand Shmuel. <laughs> okay, the next song is Summer in Ohio. Yes. And this is one of my favorite songs, yes, like, yes, of yes. all time. I wrote, Summer in Ohio is hilarious. A Summer in Ohio is the most, like, character kind of song mm-hmm. in the show. And it's <laughs> m- my favorite song to sing, like, ever. Yeah. I wrote, um, she sings about a lot of characters that she interacts with in Ohio. Yes. Um, where, where, she's in, where she's in this community theater. Um, mm-hmm. And she talks about um, the snake named Wayne that she shares a dressing room with. And yeah. I, I wrote, Wayne the snake is my favorite character. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Kathy is talking about in the song, how sucky doing community theater in Ohio is yeah. and how she would do it all. If it means she gets to live her dream yeah. uh, in this, in the movie, she's telling this to Jamie through FaceTime or yeah, something, yeah, yeah, yeah. but in the show, she's writing him a letter. Oh, yeah. That's nice. So she's like by herself writing a letter to him. Uh, the only th- thing keeping her going through all of this is the thought of Jamie coming to visit her eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's hopeful that she'll never go back. Um, a little Easter egg in the scene in the movie mm. is that mm-hmm. um, in the revival, I think it was it 2013. Yeah, in the 2013 revival of the last five years, Betsy Wolf, who was also in Waitress for a short time, mm-hmm. um, played Kathy in the revival. And the stripper in <laughs> this scene... The one who owns the snake named Wayne. <laughs> yes. Um, Kathy's roommate, uh, she shows up briefly, uh, mm-hmm. is played by Betsy Wolf. Yeah. And I th- think that's so cool and then also one of the uh well there's another easter egg later of another person who we encounter as a judge yes. which is really interesting i love her so um i love this song it's a very charactery song mm-hmm. um 
my favorite performance of this song is a Betsy Wolf performance. Um, wow. Betsy Wolf does, like, a great job with the song because she yeah. really, like, builds this character. I oh, feel like Anna so Kendrick good. was okay, but she didn't really, like, step into, like, the characterization of yeah, she this seemed a little, person. I guess not shy, but not quite as, like... Yeah. Um, as, as much of a character as Betsy mm-hmm. did it. Oh my gosh, she showed me the performance of it last night. She was so good. She's it's funny. So um, good. It's a funny song. Yeah, like, it was nice. Oh man, it's a great song. Um, so the next song is the next ten minutes, and this is the mm-hmm. only song in the show that Jamie and Kathy sing together. This is the only part of the show on stage where they even interact with each other. Yeah. It's really, really nice. It's a really good song. Uh, they're chilling. They're hanging out. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're at a gazebo. He's singing about how he wants to be fully hers for the next 10 minutes. He wants her full attention for the next 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. And um, he says all the simple things they can do with that. And then he proposes. <sighs> and um, she's like, she's like, I'm this and that. Are you sure about this? Mm-hmm. And then she accepts. And they get married. Yeah. It's really sweet. And they, they sing together. They have, like, harmony. And, like, this is the only time they sing the same song at the yeah. same time. And it's so nice. It's very nice. I wrote, nice. um, it's the first time they sing together, and I was not disappointed. Yeah. It, it, was, it was really pretty. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. The next little bit. The next little bit. Oh, my gosh. So, this is where yeah. that transition happens, where Jamie starts getting into the latter part of yeah. their relationship. And um, Kathy, I wanted to say Anna Kendrick for some reason. No, <laughs> Kathy starts getting into the earlier parts of their relationship. Mm. So we begin, it's two songs, like, into one. Yeah. Um, basically, so we start with A Miracle yeah, Would, would happen, happen, which I, I hate this song. This song made me angry. This song makes me so angry. To be honest, I didn't know this was coming. I had no idea that this would play a part in their story. I just thought, like, the whole, like, divide, like, she's always in Ohio and, like, he's always focused on his book. I thought that would be the downfall of their Mm-mm. relationship. Mm-mm. It was this. Yeah, so. And this caught me off guard. And I was like, ooh, Jamie. Because yeah. <laughs> he's so kind he's to her. so good. And then this <laughs> comes out of nowhere. I know. So, oh. basically, Jamie's other side of himself starts to show um yeah. this happens like right after they get married mm-hmm. or sometime after it and this is his change in appearance as well now uh, he has slicked back hair he's wearing like nicer yeah. like, suits he's become like super popular yeah. because of his book now and all these things um he's talking to these guys at this bar and he's like man ladies are so attractive. <laughs> yeah, he's starting to deal with a lot of temptation because he's so popular. There are a lot of young girls coming up to him asking him to, like, prove of their manuscripts, and then they're yeah. flirting. Uh, and... He's not adjusting to married life very well. <laughs> yeah. He's... Um, mm. Yeah. Another thing is that in this song, he only sees women for their bodies. Yeah, I wrote um, I get mega gross vibes from him in this song. Oh, yeah. And it's so sad. Because he's, like, he, like, is into the secretary, the publisher, all of these ladies. He's in contact mm-hmm. with all the time. Mm-hmm. And, like, you start thinking, like, oh, he doesn't do anything yet. But, like, he sees this secretary every day. He sees his publisher, like, every day. Like, yep. you can tell this guy is, like, ah, well they're hot so like i don't really care yeah and, yeah so that was like a big old yikes right there mm-hmm. uh the next part this song uh transitions into kathy auditioning i love this in new this york is, like, my favorite part in the whole thing um when you come home to me so she's auditioning and uh sherry renee scott who mm-hmm. originated so many people on Broadway. She originated Kathy in the last five years. She originated Amneris, Amneris and, Aida. and Aida. She originated Ursula in the Little Mermaid yeah. musical. Like, so many things. She is a queen, and she's I love awesome. her, and I'm obsessed with her. But she's auditioning, and then she leaves, and she calls Jamie, and she's like, oh, I think this went so well. And he's like, and he's like, 
oh my gosh, I'll be right there. And he starts going into the, basically the reprise of um, a miracle would happen. Mm -hmm. But he's like, he's like, I promise I'll be there. I will always be there. Blah, 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 blah. I don't yeah. remember how the song goes. And you like think for a second, like, oh, yeah, maybe like, this oh, is yeah. be fine. But then he turns around and you see one of the ladies he's working with is putting her shoes back on. Yeah. It gets you for a second. Because mm -hmm. it's like, oh, well, shoot. Yeah. You thought things were going to be fine, and then it's not. <sighs> yeah. Um, Man. Yeah. He promises that he will be there soon to celebrate with her, but he's still thinking about other women. And, but he's yeah. saying that his and Kathy's relationship is fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's her just audition, fine. Her audition, however, was hilarious. Um, well, you're thinking of the next song. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah, this is before that. This is, like, right before that. Um, the next song is a different it's audition. A, it's another audition. Yeah, yeah. I love this song. This is my favorite song in the show. This, um, yeah, this is definitely up there. Mm -hmm. I have, um, yeah, there are two songs that I really like, and this is one of them. Mm -hmm. Um, so this funny. song is Climbing Up Hill, and this is a Kathy song. Mm -hmm. Um, this song, wow, this song goes through a lot in oh, yeah. just a couple of minutes. We begin in an audition and she's like it's la la so la 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 and they're like next and she's like thank you and then she goes <laughs> out and we have like this like strong like instrumental in yeah. the background and she's like i'm climbing up hill jamie and she's like she's like reassuring everybody in her life that she is climbing up hill even though we know that she's really not yeah she's like getting nowhere and it this basically this entire song is just going through somebody's inner monologue of the auditioning process and it is amazing it's so um, good she's like she's like i stand in a line with like hundreds of girls that are wearing the exact same thing as me and who have already been to the gym this morning like what the heck how do yeah, i even skinnier, make it they're prettier than me so then she goes into another audition, <laughs> and, and this stage. is so good. So and instead of singing the song, we hear her song. We hear her sing throughout the movie. We hear her inner monologue. So we start to see her inner monologue as mm -hmm. she's auditioning. And it's basically like, why does this piano player hate me? He's playing louder. I guess I'll sing louder now. <laughs> why is the director staring at his crotch? Please don't look at my resume. I made up half of my resume. Like, all these oh, things. And she, it's really she hates funny. her shoes. They're looking at her shoes. Yeah. Like, why did I wear these stupid shoes? Yeah. <laughs> she's, like, she's like, I suck. I suck. I suck. <laughs> it's really, really funny. This is like, this is exactly what goes through my head when I audition the first time. I don't know about you. But oh it my was gosh. hilarious. This is, yeah, this is definitely, like, one of my yeah. favorite songs. Yeah. Well, the song keeps going, because they cut her off, and they're like, thank you, we've had enough. And she's like, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love her, like, <laughs> sassy thank you at thank the end you. of all of her auditions. <laughs> um, but then she, we go to, like, a book reading yeah. somewhere. I imagine a Barnes and Noble or something, something. like that. He's yeah. got his reading glasses on. He's reading to an he's audience. He's reading his book and Kathy's in the audience and he's reading. And it's this very quiet moment. And then all of a sudden, bam, Kathy starts singing again about the things that she wants for herself in her life. Yeah. And she's like reassuring herself. She was like, this is, um, this is what is going to happen in my life. I'm not going to be the girl who is trotting along on the genius's heels like mm -hmm. i'm going to be my own person and jamie is not gonna be my entire world even yeah. though we find out later he, she doesn't keep exactly. this promise to her something interesting i found is that while she's saying these affirmations to herself the song gets abruptly cut off by jamie again yeah talking and that's it yep yeah it's really sad i love this song it goes through so many emotions yeah um, so the next song we go to, Jamie and Kathy are fighting. If I didn't believe in you. If I didn't believe in you. Yeah. Uh, Jamie is, Kathy is refusing to go to some book party thing he's having. Because every time he takes her to one, like, he always runs off and talks to other people. He leaves her by herself. Yeah. So he's like, I don't want to do that. I don't care. He's like, he's like, bruh, I'm sorry you're frustrated, but I have to do this. Yeah. And she's, like, not talking, basically. She's, like, over it. He keeps, like, talking over her, and she's yeah. like, 
you're not even listening to me now, so in this argument when they first start talking they both have pretty valid arguments she doesn't want to go because she feels like he like leaves her to the side and that makes her upset and then he's like um like but like i want you to come with me like you're my wife i want to introduce you to people and like have you there mm-hmm. and then something snaps in him and then he starts thinking higher and he like starts like like belting and he gets angry oh and then he accuses her of you don't want to go because you're jealous of my success yes oh my gosh i have a lot of notes about this song yeah uh in the beginning he just wants her to say how she feels but she knows that you can tell that she knows that if she says how she feels he's not going to fully listen to her yeah and that's why she doesn't and she's pretty stoic and like basic like yeah nothing for the majority of this song um He claims that he knows her struggles and how she's feeling, but he doesn't because he didn't struggle. I mean, at all. And she feels like she can't relate to him Mm -hmm. anymore because of that. Uh, She doesn't know how to express her feelings because he is so successful and she's going nowhere. Um, He claiming, he's, is claiming that he does believe in her. Yeah. Um, He says, why can't you just support me by my side? But she has this entire time. Yeah, that's all she's, she's done. That's she's all she's done. And he doesn't see how hard she's trying to be happy for him while she is internally struggling. And mm-hmm. I feel that so hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, a quote from the song I wrote down is, I will not fail so you can be comfortable I will not lose so you can win. But that's not what she wants. Yeah. At all. It's really sad. Yeah. Because he's, like, yelling at her. And then after the song, eventually she just gets up and closes the door. And that's it. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't want anything to do with it. She doesn't want to be yelled at. But, like, like I said, they both had valid arguments until he got angry and something snapped. And, like, then, like, that. this is the point in the show where I was, like, okay, I am... I, there are really nothing to, like, save this character to me anymore. He's, mm-hmm. like, not a nice person. And also the whole, like, thing in his last song. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is when I was yeah. becoming Team Kathy. Yeah. So the next song is I Can Do Better Than That. It's mm-hmm. a Kathy song. Kathy and Jamie are, like, in the early stages of their relationship. Yes. And they're driving to go meet her parents. Yeah. And she's telling stories about, like what her classmates' lives are like and what her past relationships were like. And she's like, but I can do better than that because I have you now. Yeah, and it's so sweet. They're in the car. She's, like, hugging him while they're driving. Mm -hmm. And, like, everything's nice. Yeah. And good vibes only after the last It's all good vibes. (laughs) It's like, how did they start off this strong? I don't know. (laughs) It's so sad. But um, she's never looking back and she's only looking forward and mm-hmm. that's the majority of what she talks about in the song i love this song it's a great song yeah it's nice yeah. but then <gasps> that's fun. but then mm-hmm. we get all these good vibes and then we just get let down yeah jamie's next song is nobody needs to know which fun fact um yes <laughs> so needs to know. <laughs> while lin-manuel miranda was writing hamilton oh, one night while he was having a writing session he was watching this movie <laughs> and there's a line at the end of say no to this which is one of my favorite songs in hamilton mm-hmm. where it's nobody, nobody needs, needs to know. know and he got that from this song <laughs> And I love that. I think it's really funny. I love that so much. So, Jamie is freaking cheating. Yeah. With multiple people. Multiple people. Several you see in the scene. Um, It'll just pan away and it's a new lady. Every yeah. Time. <laughs> every single time. But then we see the secretary. Ugh. And then what comes after the secretary was even more of a shock to me. I was not expecting this. Um, but his publisher, yeah. the main lady he's interacting with, is uh-huh. the last lady he's with. Uh-huh. And... Her, she's a little different than all the other ladies. Yeah, and I'll, yeah, we'll get to that. So yeah. basically, in the beginning of the song, is he's talking about his promises and his vow he made to Kathy. So while he's doing this, he's still thinking about Kathy. Yeah, but he knows what he's doing is wrong. Yet more girls just keep showing up. Yep, <laughs> just different ones in every like oh. every time they pan away. It's oh like gosh. what in the world, Jamie? No, we were all rooting for you. Yeah. Jeremy Jordan's performance in the song, though, is so it was, it was gut-wrenching. Like, yeah. I love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, 
He's bro. almost like, but in the song though, um, he there's no redeeming him at this point. He's almost blaming this on Kathy. Like, well, yeah, yeah, like, oh, it's her fault that I'm seeking the comfort of other people because, like, yeah, she. But that's not yeah. how that works. Yeah, <laughs> because she, she what? She what? Exactly. What'd she do? Nothing. Stand by your side for the last five years. Yeah. Be nothing but happy for you while she's struggling on her own. Like, bro, get your act together. Yeah. Man. So at this point, I was I I was just waiting for the, the right guy. I'm because like she doesn't need this guy. Uh, yeah, she can she can do better than that. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's really sad. Yeah, yeah. And oh, the what was that girl? The publisher, the secretary that you wanted to talk about, who was different. Oh, um, towards the end of the song, you see her, um, and he. Tells her that I can love you, um, which is something that he said to Kathy earlier in the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and he says it to, to her. Yeah, something about specifically that character is like before even that happens, before they get, whoops, before they get back in bed, <laughs> they, she starts crying yeah. in his arms and he's comforting her. And it's basically how I see it because this doesn't happen in the stage production yeah. in the stage production he's by himself mm-hmm. like because there are there is no ensemble in the stage production but he she's crying in his arms and how i see it is that she knows kathy is there she knows that he's married and yeah she feels bad for doing this mm-hmm. and he's basically comforting her and being like it's okay like yeah you're not like the other girls i actually I like love you. you yeah yeah and after, like, I could love, he says, like, something like, I could love you like that or something, mm-hmm. which is what he says to Kathy earlier. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, yikes. That's yeah. not good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a great song, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so then once we're all sappy, mm-hmm. we get to this really happy, happy song. song. <laughs> this is, um, this song takes place right after Shik's a goddess, basically. If you're talking about chronological order, this happens after that. And this is her last solo. It is. Yeah. Um, it's goodbye until tomorrow, and she's like struggling to say goodbye because their love struck, and she just like doesn't wait and say goodbye to him. Yeah, she's so excited, and she's just like walking. Like after he leaves, she's just walking. She's just walking around. And she like, she finds the stairway, and she's leaning against the stairway, and you can tell in the background, like, oh, this is their future apartment. Yeah. And she doesn't know that yet. Yes. And she's just, like, leaning up against the stairs, and, and she's like, she's singing, tomorrow. I will be waiting for you. Yeah. While and then, she- oh in the my background, gosh. you see, you see the camera pans up towards the window, and you see Jamie in the window, in the gray darkness of their future, writing the letter. And you can tell how different the light is. She's bright and colorful out in the sun. Yeah. Summer, and him in that house. I love the lighting in, in this there. movie. I love the lighting in this movie. And then I we love pan up to him, and he has his last solo song. Yes. And he, it, his solo is I Could Never Rescue You. Yeah. Um, and he's, we get to hear what's in the letter. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know, I, my secretary helped me pack up my things. Yep, which is the lady that he. Said, I cl- I, I closed the bank lady. account. Like I can't rescue you, so I'm leaving. Yeah, even though what the heck? It's everything's basically. I I mean, in my opinion, a lot of their downfall is his fault yeah. because of his success. Uh, um, and this song's really really sad <gasps> because when so he's sad. done writing the letter and he puts down the ring and the keys, he leaves the apartment with his bags and he passes by past Kathy. She's old Kathy, not like past Kathy, old, not yeah. Past Kathy. Um who is still singing goodbye until tomorrow uh-huh. and their songs overlap each other yes. where he is just like so just like over their relationship and she is in the beginning stages of their relationship mm-hmm. and like you can tell uh, like with the lighting again like she's all sunshiny and bright and he's like dark and despair and Mm -hmm. finally he starts to walk away and she's just like goodbye until tomorrow yeah and And he leaves 
past Kathy disappears. Yeah, you, the, it, the, that transition's really cool. That, it pans over his shoulder and she's just gone. Yeah, and then we get a wide shot of the street, the apartment's on, mm-hmm. and the lighting just goes completely gray. And, and you see Kathy. present Kathy going into the apartment, and that's where it ends. Yeah, and that's it. Oof. <laughs> I love this musical so it's much. It's really sad. Um, yeah. It honestly, Kathy is one of my biggest dream roles of all time. I love her character so much. Um, I love her songs. Mm-hmm. A now lot. I was about to ask, um, how we do in our musical segments? Like we we pick a character that we'd want to play, and then our favorite yeah. song. There are really only one option for us. Yeah, there's only Kathy. <laughs> so there I is guess, only Kathy. Yeah. <laughs> um. Now, what about your favorite songs? My favorite songs are "Climbing Up Hill." Mm-hmm. Summer in Ohio, and oh, I don't even know a third one. I, I have my three. I mine are climbing uphill, summer in Ohio, and see, I'm smiling. Oh yeah, I love that song too. I think we have the three same favorite songs because they're the best they're songs so in the show. <laughs> oh my gosh, man, I absolutely adore the show, and great. I wish it got way more attention. Yeah, than like it does. I never had heard about it until you brought it up. Yeah. And, and I loved it. I'm obsessed with this show. It was great. It, and I really want to see how differently it is, like, mm-hmm. on the stage show. So I have to watch a bootleg. Or, yeah. Sorry, slime tutorial of it or something. Yeah. No. Go check it out. The movie is currently free on YouTube with ads, which is how we watched it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, any chance you get, go check it oh, out. Yeah, it please is watch it. It's so, so good. Good. Yeah. Go check out Betsy Wolf's performance of Summer in Ohio. Not the Barnes and Noble performance, the other one. There's she sings it a lot. She sings it in a Barnes and Noble. Yeah. Interesting. And she changes the lyrics. You know the lyric in Summer in Ohio, I saw your book at a borders in Kentucky. She changes yeah. it to I saw your book at a Barnes and Noble in Kentucky. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> um, go check her out. Um the bootleg of Sherry Renee Scott and I cannot remember his name. Whoever the original Jamie is, is also on YouTube. It's not that good, but, you know, if you want to see the OG cast do it, Mm -hmm. go check it out. There's tons of performances of it on YouTube. So, yeah. I love this show. Final thoughts? I think that was it. I think that's it. So, go check it out. Mm -hmm. Um, We're going to take a break, and then we'll be back with all the other things. Yep. Welcome back. Welcome we are back. back after two hours. We went to the farm on campus. It was, it was lots of fun. Amazing. We will post pictures on our yes, Instagram. It was one of the greatest experiences ever. We met these two precious baby goats, and I love them, and my hair is all sticky and stuck together because I got eaten. I did not. <laughs> Lucky me. Oh, they, they, they had like a little bit of goat yoga, and they had these big mm-hmm. old dogs, and the dogs were precious, and I have lots of pictures of them, and yes. it was great. We feel mentally refreshed and ready to get back to this. Yes. So, for sleepover games today, we are going to play Word Association. Uh, we played this at, like, dinner or something yeah. the other day. She was falling asleep, and I wanted to keep her awake. Yeah, I have not <laughs> slept in a while, so... That's what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. So uh, I will start you off. Goat. Baby. Mama. Dada. <laughs> Mustache. Pistachios. Christmas. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus. Amen. Bible. Study. Book. Play. Musical. Shrek. <laughs> Farquad. Fiona. Dog. Woof. <laughs> <laughs> Meow. Woof. <laughs> okay, I think that's the end of that one. Yeah, uh, that was excellent. Um, okay. Woof. <laughs> <laughs> woof. We are high off of the farm right now. <laughs> My allergies are going to be so bad tonight. Okay. Um, let's see. I got to think of a word. <laughs> uh, clown. Hmm. Ball. Tennis. Uh, golf. No. No? 
No. You said tennis, so I said golf. I know, and my word was no. Oh! <laughs> I thought you just meant no! <laughs> yes. Maybe? So. I don't know. This is not going anywhere. We're saying phrases now. Uh, you want me to start one last one, and then we'll, sure. we'll do one more. <laughs> um, hmm. Hot chocolate. Polar Express. Snow. Snowman. Christmas. Tom Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> Toy Story. Uh, Woody. Buzz. Jesse. Disney Channel. Hey, Jesse. <laughs> Woo. Uh, Hannah Montana. I haven't even seen that show. Miley Cyrus. Uh, music. Wrecking Ball. <laughs> uh, construction. Flynn. Aw. <laughs> Trex. Please chuck at the day. Chuck, chuck, chuck at the day. <laughs> we aren't making any sense anymore. I think that's all. Oh my gosh. Thank you for listening to Brain Fog, uh, the musical. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay, so that was Sleepover Games. <laughs> that was a mess. Ding. Um, so we have some shout outs for people who guessed the movie correctly on our Instagram yes. today. Uh, our main winner is our friend Reagan. Mm-hmm. Uh, shouting out her Instagram is Reagan underscore horn underscore <laughs> horn. I'm sorry. I cannot speak, but go follow her. She's cool. Yeah. And our runner ups are Kimberly and Faith. Thank you guys. Thank you for, for- interacting playing our games participation trophy <laughs> yay um make sure you keep an eye out on our instagram we are going to be doing a live q a at, at some point yes um, uh, we have a lot going on right now with finals and everything so yeah we we're planning on doing it the day we are recording but we have to postpone it so we shall see yes but we will 100 percent do it because i think it would be Tons of fun. Mm-hmm. So keep an eye out on our Instagram at popcultureingmybff underscore podcast um, for more things. And I think that's the end of this episode. Yeah. Thank yes. you guys for listening. Thank you so much. Um, we'll see you next time. Yeah. I don't have any hints to give because we don't know what we're doing next yes, time. Yes, <laughs> we have uh, our semester reset. Uh, next week so we don't know who's going to be here at one time we gotta we gotta (laughs) get a schedule going again so indeed but we will see you next time thank you goodbye thank you for joining us this week on pop culturing my best friend tune in next time when we talk about more stuff and things Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram at popculturingmybff_podcast underscore podcast for behind the scenes content and more.